Welcome to Generation Digital Workforce, the podcast that's here to explore the role of robotic process automation and other digital technologies. Whether you're just getting started or you're looking for advanced strategies and tactics, if you're curious about where human and digital workers are coming together to transform the future of work, then this podcast is for you. All right, let's get into the show. Hello, everyone. I'm Brad Hairston with Blue Prism. Today on the Generation Digital Workforce podcast, my guest is Purna Dadapanini, the head of the Automation Center of Excellence at Bain and Company. I will be talking with him about how intelligent automation in the cloud will become the new normal. Purna, thank you for joining me today. Thanks much, Brian. Happy to be here. So why don't you start by just telling us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I live in Dallas uh, with my wife and two girls an almost six-year-old and a nine-month-old. I started my professional career in tech industry at NVIDIA as a system software engineer. Um, I was helping build the backend frameworks to support visual computing in many forms, from playing, designing video games to AI deep learning. After a few years at NVIDIA, I moved into consulting a little over four years ago, with a couple of hops in between before I joined Bain & Company a year ago. In the last few years, I've supported multiple clients in their technology transformation, with specific focus in automation. In my current role at Bain, I lead our Automation Center of Excellence with two broad mandates. The first one is helping our clients in their automation journey. And the second is building our vendor ecosystem partnerships to bring the right toolkit to support our clients in their journeys. Okay, thank you for that background, uh, Purna. So, so what impact has the pandemic had on your role and and your team as well. Could you speak to that? Yeah, um, as you are encountering in your conversations, um, no one was prepared to handle this scale of pandemic when operations in multiple geos across the globe went dark. In the role we are in, we had a good amount of travel to work with our clients in their journeys. All their, um, all of this came to an abrupt halt and overnight we had to heavily rely on technology tools to drive business continuity, not only to perform our day-to-day -day operations, but our work with clients. Um, we had to build tools and products to help our clients continue their great work and adopt to new ways of working remotely. Specifically um, for our role in automation, we have seen increased interest in companies looking at automation as one of the key levers to help them weather the current crisis and a necessary lever as they come out of the pandemic and be prepared to handle them in the future. Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. So as we now shift into our discussion on automation in the cloud, uh, Purna, do you think the pandemic has helped make the cloud more normal for the enterprise? And if so, why? Yes, definitely. Um, as mentioned earlier, like we had um, operations across geos go, go dark over the weekend and companies had to quickly realize they had multiple challenges to work through, 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 the, uh, through and during the pandemic. Um, they still need to provide uninterrupted services to their customers. They had to manage higher workload with reduced resources. They needed to adjust to moving their employees to work in a safer remote or work from home environments. In all these three cases, um, there was a need to either spin up a new environment or scale up digital workers to suppose, support the increased demand. If you think about it, I can spin up a VM for my employees with a push of a button versus setting up an on-prem system or shipping it home. Right. So do you envision that enterprises will backslide back to on-prem once the pandemic subsides? Uh, it's a good question. So prior to the pandemic, firms were debating like if moving to the cloud is necessary, but were mostly comfortable with their on-prem solutions for various reasons, right? They have a working solution, why disrupt it? They were worried about security of moving to the cloud. They were worried about change management, new learning curve with managing their environment on the cloud. They were even worried about disruptions to their own business and or the service they are providing to the customers, etc. All of this um, went out the door when they had to rethink on how they should continue their business operations in a pandemic um, environment. They were forced to consider cloud platform support them. And in the process, they realizing the artificial barriers they envisioned aren't necessarily true. Um, cloud environment has proven to be easier to adopt, scale, and prepare them to handle further future disruptions. 
um, given all of these benefits, they are seeing would be surprising if it would relapse. That being said, you I mean, never say never. Um, I can see few reasons they might go back, like data privacy concerns or security concerns, mm. or not having a, a proper clear governance policy on how they have to manage this new environment. Yeah, great points. So, so Perna, uh, clearly there are multiple ways to configure uh, cloud automation solutions. How do you view the the spectrum of alternatives? Yeah. So as you said, like there are multiple flavors of them. Um, but in our experience, we see it in like four broad categories. Um, first of them is like not even cloud, basically doing complete on-prem solution. The automation solutions are built in the client environment and they are by an SI vendor or an internal developer. Um, and similarly managed by either a service provider or by internal resources. The, the first entry into the cloud is like, where clients have their private cloud cloud environment, where they have their own VMs on their cloud. And like the previous option, um, everything else will be the same, except that the environment is moved into VMs for a client private cloud. A third flavor of that, which I've seen more, was um, managed service offering, where you have a BPO or a service provider um, who is going to build the automation in their own non-client environment and connect to the client system through a, a private uh, tunnel or a VPN. Then they build and manage most of the automation solution by, uh, like by the by BPO provider, other service provider. Um, and the fourth flavor is like full on uh, cloud solution, which is like the standard full cloud solution that is provided by software vendors, um, like for example, BPC Cloud by Blue Prism, where the vendor is going to provide all the infrastructure and necessary tools in a scaled and standard environment, where a client is at liberty to use an SI vendor to build and manage the automation solution, or they can use internal resources to do it. Across these four options, um, each of them have their strengths and challenges, but we have seen the most benefits with the last option where you get a full cloud solution by a software vendor. Hmm. Okay. It's good to have options, right? <laughs> uh, so, sure. so Perna, can you um, just give us a feel for why your clients are interested in a cloud-based intelligent automation solution? Yeah, there, um, there are a multitude of reasons, um, it, why, like, we've seen, um, interest in a cloud-based automation solution. Um, as we talked earlier, prior to the pandemic, most firms have relied on traditional levers, like outsourcing for their efficiency gains and cost improvement. With the pandemic, they're realizing that alone, that alone might not be sufficient for them to weather the crisis and be prepared for a future one. Automation has been one of the key levers they are pulling and are looking to aggressively progress on their automation journey. For clients who haven't started on their automation journey or are there in their early days, it is a daunting task to work through the business cases, set up and scale the infrastructure, support and maintain the automations, and even be able to support multiple automation technologies on a given platform. Mm, agreed. Yep. Uh, so if you look at the, the cloud-based automation solution, it can help you in multiple ways. The very first is it gets started with a little lift from the client IT people. Um, the, the next one we have seen was speed to implement or speed to value with pre-built and tested automation solutions that are already available on the cloud. The, the, the third option we have seen was if you have a consistent environment to ensure stability and scalability of the solution. In our experience, automation sort of journeys have traditionally started off in an ad hoc manner, either in a function or in a business unit. To support these projects, infrastructure was not set up for a scale program, nor is it designed to be resilient, support disaster recovery, etc. With a cloud solution, this is where we start. Um, so the, the fourth benefit we have seen was lower total cost of ownership for the whole solution. If you think about it for an on-prem solution, we invest a lot of time to understand the licensing and implementation costs. But in most cases, there is lack of transparency on the infrastructure setup, maintenance, support costs, which for a cloud, it's pretty clear set of ownership and uh, accountability. 
The other, the fifth benefit we have seen was minimal to no additional resources are needed to manage and maintain the automation platform. For example, if you have to do fixes, upgrades, patches, maintenance, and so on. And the easier um, option that we have seen for most of our clients was one licensing model for the automation solution that can be applied to multiple business cases. And they, they're not having to manage multiple automation technologies, licenses, updates, etc. across different solutions. And one final benefit, which I feel is, is a critical factor for cloud adoption, was reusability and a repeatable model. Solutions that are built for certain industries, functions, use cases, what have you, are in most cases replicable across companies. In addition, it will also open up new markets. We were recently talking to one of the AI solution provider about challenges they face in marketing their solution to small and medium businesses as an on-prem solution becomes expensive to the point they don't want to venture into an automation journey or automation space. With cloud, you have a pre-built, pre-packaged solution that will reduce those barriers and more companies can benefit with it. Mm, definitely a lot of good reasons to consider the cloud. So thank you. Thank you for going through that, uh, Purna. So we are talking about the era of intelligent automation, not just you know basic uh, RPA, if you will. Um, and intelligent automation, as you would agree, is, is you know companies using digital workers uh, combined with intelligent skills uh, or, or cognitive technologies like OCR or machine learning or, or natural language processing. Mm -hmm. So how does the cloud factor into this world of intelligent automation solutions? Sure. So I think this is one of the key challenges we face in, in our conversations on automation journeys. One of the key failure modes we have seen is firms considering robotics process automation synonymous to automation and looking to solve all of their business problems with just RPA. It's like considering RPA as a hammer and looking for business problems or nails to hit with it. They need to look at the business process end to end and pick the right solution, um, right automation tool or a combination of automation tools to drive efficiencies in their processes. Let's take an example of an invoice process. You would need to be able to digitize the content from a PDF or an email, which is better handled by the OCR solution. Once data is extracted, then you would need RPA to help you code it into your ERP system, notify appropriate employees on approvals or next steps. In this case, they need to do use go through another vendor scan for OCR tools, assuming the RPA vendor they selected doesn't have the native OCR capability or they haven't purchased it to begin with. Now you have two vendor relationships to maintain, two tools to manage, and in the process, you're delaying the implementation of the solution and increasing the work for your team to support. While many cloud-based offerings in the market, including Blue Prism, have intelligent skills built into them. So these additional technologies do not have to be procured, integrated separately, or provide a consistent environment. Right. Versus you only need to work on your opportunity identification and implementation of the solution, while the solution provider is managing these different automation solutions in the background with just one licensing model. One um, additional advantage with this approach is in tomorrow's world, if there is a better OCR solution available in the market, your cloud automation provider will seamlessly replace the underlying OCR technology behind the scenes, ensuring that you have the continuity in your automated business processes. Um, it's a very nice fringe benefit of the cloud that can of often accelerate what you call as a hyper automation. And often this drives companies towards a cloud solution versus a non-prem. Hmm. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So let's talk about software as a service um, and, and specifically RPA as a service. I know you have experience building out a SaaS offering of this flavor. Can you tell us about that? Yeah. So um, in my past life, uh, a couple of years ago, I've helped in design, designing, architecting and building of an RPA as a service platform. Um, in the process, I also helped deploy uh, at one of our clients who were um, early adopters who want to embrace this platform. In, in our client conversations, the clients were convinced on benefits of RPA, but were not willing to invest in developing internal resources to build, manage, and maintain the automation solution. 
they were willing to buy it as a service. If we have a packaged product that they can pay by process, they wanted to automate. Um, this was a few years ago, and at that time, we didn't have a similar product in the market. And honestly, we ran into few challenges in connecting all the necessary pieces of the puzzle. Like if you think about it, you have RPA software, you have licenses for the business applications, you have your cloud platform, you need to have a scalable support model, um, including being more economical for the clients and for us. And you need to have an isolated environment, support all the GDP, PR restrictions across the geos. So all of this to ensure to have a win-win solution for us and the clients we are supporting. Once we have cleared all these hurdles, it felt like a good solution to support our clients to embrace automation. And we've seen good amount of adoption following it. Is the SaaS model for RPA increasing in demand, in your opinion? Absolutely. Um, so we are seeing like increased interest in SaaS model as it's reducing a lot of barriers for our clients who are venturing into their automation journey. There's a growing demand for the mid-market companies that are limited in their ability to add new technologies to their footprint and train or add people internally to support it. Most of these companies are going cloud first on all of their enterprise applications. So it only makes sense for them to uh, move to a RPA as a service model. The increased need for intelligent automation is also making SaaS really attractive since the customers can get access to many of the intelligent skills they need like OCR and ML without having to bring in additional vendors into their ecosystem. Hmm. Okay. Well, I know that Bain does a lot of work in the private uh, private equity sector. Mm -hmm. For those PE firms who have invested in automation, whether at the PE level or across their portfolio, how do these companies view the cloud? Yeah, so if you're looking for with a PE hat on, you would want to get to efficiency gains as fast as you can and have a lower footprint for recurring costs. Cloud hits both these factors very well. If they are looking at scaling the automations at a rapid pace with a single licensing model, seamless integration of multiple automation technologies, and reduce stress on resources to manage these solutions, having an automation solution available on the cloud would be a no-brainer. In addition, it also helps them to work on a repeatable model that they can take to all of their portfolio companies for after. Okay. So, uh, Perna, I've reached the my final question for you, and I want you to uh, put on your prognosticator hat, if you will. <laughs> what do you, what do you think the future of cloud based consumption of digital workers looks like? So, based on the conversations we are having, um, I would expect it would only go up. What I'm not sure is the pace at which the consumption goes up. Um, I'm hopeful it will be at a faster pace, especially after a shock to the system with COVID and the associated benefits that come with the cloud. The one challenge I see both for companies and automation solution providers is the path to moving their on -pre existing on-prem solution to the cloud. As long as we can make the transition smoother, it will only help cloud-based consumption. Um, so if, yeah, if you want to have a prediction, Looking at the rate of progress in the last few years, I would imagine in the five plus year horizon, significant portion of it, if not all of hyper automation, including digital workers and their AI capabilities will be consumed in the cloud. Okay, there you have it. The cloud is the future, straight from the mouth of uh, Purna Dada Panini. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, thank you so much for your time today and, and all of your your thoughts and insights, uh, Purna. It has been uh, a pleasure to be with you and uh, be well, my friend. Thanks much, Brad. Really happy to be here. You've been listening to Generation Digital Workforce. If you want to hear more about RPA, AI, and other cognitive technologies that are shaping the future of work, join us next time as we continue to go deeper on these topics with industry innovators and experts. To make sure you never miss a future episode, subscribe to the show in your favorite podcast player. And if you've liked what you heard today, please leave us a review. It's one of the best ways to help more people find valuable content. For show notes and more info, visit us at blueprism.com slash podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.